Hey everyone, Vinayak here. Do you like retro games like Mario, Contra and many more? For a lot of us it brings back memories of long hours glued to the TV. Today we are going to relive those memories by installing RetroPie on a Raspberry Pi. I also wanted it to be compact enough to be able to carry along during trips. So let's make a compact wireless RetroPie gaming console. A Raspberry Pi can be powered using a power bank which in itself makes it portable but to be able to play games on the go we will need a few parts of course number 1 is the Raspberry Pi i'm using the Pi 3B plus as that's the only one i have then you would need a memory card to store the retro pi installation and also the roms i have a 16 gb card i would suggest a minimum 8 gb card you can add bigger ones such as 32 or 64 gb if you want to add more games then a keyboard keyboard i have this a wireless keyboard you can use a wired usb keyboard instead a game pad as you would be gaming and gaming using a game pad is easier as i wanted it to be portable a display i have this 5 inch display with me which is also a touch screen we don't need the touch functionality but it is an added bonus if you don't want to use a portable display you can just connect the raspberry pi to your tv directly using the hdmi port on it But if you are using the display and you want everything in a compact form factor, you will need a case to put everything together. And this one is 3D printed, but not designed by me. The STL is available in the description. You would also need a micro SD card reader to flash the downloaded image onto the memory card. Now to get on with the installation. Getting RetroPie onto a memory card is not that difficult. Download the image of the RetroPie website, which can be found at retropie.org.uk. Click on Get Retro Pi and download the image as per the Raspberry Pi model you have. I have a 3B plus, so the Raspberry Pi 2 slash 3 would be the one for me. Once the file is downloaded, we have to flash the image to the micro SD card. We need a tool like Balina Etcher. Download from this website, install and open it up. Insert micro SD card into a card reader. The first option is to select an image. Select the downloaded file as is. Don't try extracting it. second select the memory card make sure you are selecting the correct card as the drive will be formatted i need to select the transcend memory card reader and select the 16 gb card the software would decompress the image and write to the memory card why we use this software and not directly copy the files to the memory card is because the card needs to be partitioned with the correct sizes and each of the files would be written to the appropriate partition the software automates the process making it much easier to install Flashing is now complete. Now insert the memory card into the Raspberry Pi and complete the installation. I am placing it into the case I had 3D printed. If you want to know how I set up the display for the Raspberry Pi, you can watch the video here. I am surprised that the Raspberry Pi sits within the case quite snugly. And to send the display signals, it comes with a HDMI to HDMI connector. And here it is. All we need now is power which I'm connecting to the PC temporarily. The Raspberry Pi starts booting into RetroPie. Once you're on the welcome screen and if you have a keyboard attached, tap on the key to start setting up key assignments. Keys for up, down, left, right, A, B, etc. Now to keep it wireless and ease gaming, a wireless gamepad would be more comfortable to use. Open up configuration which is activated by hitting the A key you had set up earlier. The RetroPie displays options that are configurable. Select Bluetooth from the list and the Bluetooth configuration screen opens. Now select register and connect to Bluetooth device. Make sure your gamepad is in pairing mode. Select wireless controller in the discovered devices list. It could be different as per the brand of your controller. And the controller is now paired, but you can't still use it in RetroPie as it has to be configured. Open the main menu and select configure input. Tap a key on the gamepad to initiate configuration. and as per the options displayed on screen press up down left right etc as you had configured the keyboard earlier now for the roms here's where i had problems trying to get the games off a usb flash drive onto the raspberry pi i didn't want to always remove the micro sd card to add games as it is a bit cumbersome because of the case ah but there is another way which is simpler and much faster first we need to connect the raspberry pi to wifi so select wifi in the list Manually add the SSID and password and connect your device to your Wi-Fi. Next, we need the IP address for your Raspberry Pi. So open up the configuration, select show IP from the list. Now you have the IP address displayed. Make sure to connect the Raspberry Pi to Wi-Fi or hardwire using Ethernet first. On Windows, hold down Windows key plus R 
and the run dialog opens up. Enter two forward slashes and the IP address you copied down. A dialog box might open up, we asking for the username and password. Enter pi as the username and raspberry as the password and now you can see the folders and files on the raspberry pi. Open the ROMs folder and you should see a list of emulators supported by RetroPy. Download the appropriate ROMs and copy them to their respective folders. So SNES ROMs to SNES, Game Boy to GB folder, etc. Once done, restart the emulator and you should now see the name of the emulators for the ROMs you have copied. Open up the emulator name and you can see a list of games. Select one and the game starts playing. So there are multiple systems RetroPy supports and just add the ROMs to the corresponding folder and done. You can listen to the audio using the 3.5mm jack or via a Bluetooth headset. You can also connect to a TV using a HDMI cable for big screen gaming. As it is not legal to share ROMs, I am not providing links to them. Just search for the system name that is like SCPS, Game Boy and ROM, you should find them. There are tons of sites where ROMs are available, but be careful as a lot of them are spammy and can contain viruses. So just a word of warning. Now let's try this out with a power bank. It works. Not sure how long it will last, but if you connect it to your car's USB port, you can keep the device almost on indefinitely. And everything powers off a single micro USB cable, the Raspberry Pi and the display. I will have to check how the temps are and if it throttles, but it works and is effectively a portable gaming system. Wireless gamepad and wireless audio allows playing comfortably from a distance. You could use a bigger screen too if you want, but the case I've shared will not fit bigger screens. Some DIYers make their own arcade cabinets using RetroPie and custom controllers. I have shared links to the Raspberry Pi, the 5 inch screen and also the STL for the case I've used if you want to make one for yourself. So if you like retro games and with the Raspberry Pi not being that expensive, it's a great DIY retro gaming console. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you would be making one for yourselves. Also make sure to like, subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added. Thank you for watching and see you all next time.